and welcome to the Rebel Review Show. I'm your host, Alexander Rebel, and I welcome you from the couch that I happen to be sitting at. Today, I'm going to teach you how to tie a tie. This is a systematic and in-depth tutorial that will teach you everything you need to know in order to make a wins or not, and it starts right now. Step 1. Wrap the tie around your neck. In order for you to properly tie a tie, you'll need to give yourself enough length to both tie the knot and to make both ends even with one another. As a general rule of thumb, it's best to leave the short end with a third of the tie and then the long end with the rest of it. And once you've properly wrapped the tie around your neck, you'll proceed to step number two. Become the dictator of a small country. If you want to tie your tie, you'll need to have absolute power over the unsuspecting people of a small sovereign nation. But this will be a very complicated process. There are several things you'll need to do in order to become the dictator of a small country, and I just happen to have all those things right here. The first thing you'll need is a supply of lethal neurotoxin, like this. This is a bottle of cyanide. And don't worry, you're not actually going to kill anyone, you're going to do better. Frame someone in an attempt to kill someone. It will be a false assassination plot against the current leader. You will frame one of the current leader's political rivals with the bottle of cyanide, and you will then expose this rival in the presence of the leader and therefore earn his trust. And once you've done this, you'll use the second thing you'll need. Hard drugs, like this. This is a bag of cocaine. In order for you to properly become the dictator of a small country, you'll need to lead the current leader into discovering the joy of narcotics. And as he goes on a downward spiral of addiction and madness, you will take the opportunity to seize power and become the acting prime minister of the nation. And once you've done this, you'll use the third thing you'll need. A bomb, like this one. This bomb is set to go off in 10 minutes, but don't worry. This tutorial will be long over by then. The bomb, though, is a necessary part of the tutorial. And when you make your bomb, you have to make sure it has just enough power to blow a hole in a wall, because that's what you're going to use it for. You're going to use the bomb to give the appearance of an attempt on your life this time. You will make sure the bomb detonates in close proximity to you, and you will declare martial law in the country until the failed assassin is found. And of course, the assassin never will be found, and you will have achieved dictator status in your country. Uh-oh, looks like I underestimated the timer on this bomb. Let's proceed to step three before it explodes. Step three, develop a nuclear warhead. In order for you to properly tie a tie, you'll need to take the absolute power you have over your small country and affirm your status to the world. You'll do this, of course, by commissioning a Russian scientist to help you. A Russian scientist would be perfect to help you develop your nuclear program, and I just happen to know a Russian scientist. His name is Dr. Victor, and he would gladly help you if you asked him. So I'd like to introduce him to you now. Hello, comrades. Not many people know Victor, also nuclear scientist. But anyway... Back in 1958, Soviet Kremlin asked Victor to conduct great patriotic study for greater good of Supreme Soviet. Victor graciously accepted, and Victor began study on the effect of nuclear radiation on human body. Soviet Kremlin had a big Russian plan to drop bomb on the United States and then send an invasion force to take control of country. Soviet Kremlin wanted to know if it's safe to expose Russian forces to radiation and aftermath of bomb. Victor head to Siberia and Gulag to begin study, and Victor spent eight months there. Now maybe you ask, Victor, what is Gulag? Well, Victor tell you. First, all praise to current Russian president. Victor know that current Russian president, whoever he may be, is best president Russia ever have. Praise be upon him forever. Now, anyway. Every now and then, politicians in Russia try to take power away from supreme and unquestioned president. And more often than not, politicians fail to get power. Instead, he arrested and sent to a horrible place in Siberia called Gulag. Gulag is prison for enemies of Russian president. If you challenge president and fail, you end up in Gulag. And what happened in Gulag? Victor, go to Gulag and promise you freedom in exchange for participation in scientific study. Of course... No one in Gula give or get freedom. Freedom simply concept Victor used to convince prisoner to help study. But anyway, Victor spent eight months in Siberian Gulag and tell prisoner they get freedom if nuclear radiation not harm them. Unfortunately, nuclear radiation kill every single one of them. So Victor have no choice but to conclude that prisoner in Gulag simply not want freedom enough to live. Soviet Kremlin agreed that Victor had to try different Gulag for better results. In hindsight, Victor should have probably concluded that radiation bad for human body. Not a prisoner in first gulag not want freedom enough. But that's not how Soviet science work. 
Soviet science more practical than American science. So anyway, Victor finally got results Soviet Kremlin want, and Victor hailed as hero of Soviet Union. He was first of many times Victor hailed as hero of Soviet Union. So if you want nuclear bomb in your country, call Victor. Victor make bomb for you without question. Thank you, Victor. So in conclusion, for step three, you will use your absolute power over your small country to hire Victor for your nuclear program. And once you have a bomb, you'll proceed to step number four. Steal the Eiffel Tower. Let's face it, in order for your small country to attract tourism, you'll need to give people a reason to travel there. So the best course of action is to steal one of the world's most famous monuments and relocate it in your country. This will not be an easy task, however. In order to steal the Eiffel Tower, you'll need to do something to distract the country of France. And my best suggestion to do this would be to create your own brand of sparkling wine and call it Champagne. If you called your own brand of sparkling wine Champagne, then France would really be distracted. So do this, steal the Eiffel Tower, and then proceed to step number five. Make ties illegal in your country. Let's face it, tying a tie is impossible. The world would be better off without them. And now that you have absolute power over your own country, you can do what needs to be done. So in conclusion, there is no point in learning how to tie a tie if you're just going to make them illegal in your country. And that's all the time we have for today. I'm Alexander Rebell, and thank you for watching the Rebell Review Show. I have to go now. This fake cocaine isn't going to snort itself.